After graduating from high school in 1997, I had a lot to be excited for, but there was really only one thing on my mind, Final Fantasy VII. It was mid-July when I decided to finally leave the 16-bit era behind and buy myself a PlayStation. FF7 wasn't due till early September, so I chose one game to keep me occupied until then. I walked out of Electronics Boutique that day with a brand new PlayStation and an RPG called Wild Arms. First booting up Wild Arms, I was greeted by the name Media Vision, a developer who I'd never heard of. What followed was the perfect swan song for 16-bit style RPGs before they'd all become pre-rendered backgrounds and cinematic cutscenes. By the time the credits rolled, I needed to know more about this media vision. What else had they done? I expected an RPG that never saw release outside of Japan, but what I got was much different. This is Gunner's Heaven, a run-and-gun shooter developed by Media Vision before the Wild Arms series put them on the map. Gunner's Heaven was released near the launch of the PlayStation in Japan in 1995. It would make its way to PAL territories about a year later under the name Rapid Reload, and would be available alongside the console from day one. Unfortunately, the American branch of Sony Computer Entertainment famously had a grudge against 2D games during this period, and would not allow this game to be released on North American shores. Look. Before we dig in a little deeper, let's address the elephant in the room. It's very clear where the inspiration for Gunner's Heaven came from. If you're a fan of Treasure's iconic run and gunner, Gunstar Heroes, then you'll notice more than a passing resemblance here. It's clear that the team at Media Vision loved Gunstar Heroes, and wanted to make a game that felt very similar. There's nothing wrong with that, and as you'll find out, they certainly didn't do a bad job paying homage. Gunner's Heaven stars two characters, Axel Sonics and Ruka Hetfield, who find themselves chasing after a powerful stone relic called the Valkyrie. Since this power could easily be used for evil, it would make sense that a group of bad guys is after it as well. In this case, these bad guys are called the Pumpkin Heads. Just a quick look at the character designs of Gunner's Heaven, and you can absolutely tell that this is from the same team that would go on to bring us the amazing Wild Arms. I mean, look. Rudy is practically a carbon copy of Axel, right down to the red bandana on his head. Much like Wild Arms, Gunner's Heaven feels like a late 16-bit era game, with a few 32-bit flourishes here and there. Sprites are well animated, and there's a ton going on at once with little to no slowdown, and there's a bunch of multi-tier bosses that await you. Battling their way through five levels, Ruka and Axel run and gun their way through cities, jungles, and a factory. The third and fifth levels switch things up a bit and become a bit more shooter-oriented as you rollerblade along train tracks or take to the skies above. Each stage reaches its natural climax with a face-off against one of the Pumpkin Head's generals. Ready to have your mind blown, and not in a good way? Gunner's Heaven is for one player only. I'm not quite sure why this is the case, but I definitely spent a few minutes trying to figure out if I was just missing something. I mean, that's how these games were meant to be played. I don't know, maybe the sprites were just a little bit too big and the developers felt that things would get too cluttered with two players. Who knows what the true reason is, but it's certainly a feature that is sorely lacking, and it might be a deal breaker for some people. Another interesting thing about this game is that it has absolutely no memory card support, so expect to play through Gunner's Heaven in its entirety in one sitting. When you start a new game, you choose from either Axel or Ruka, who control identically with their running, jumping, grappling, and climbing. It's the gunning part where things get interesting. Both characters are equipped with a different set of four weapons, which can be toggled through with the press of the triangle button. But as you spend time with both of them, you'll find that they're fairly similar and that each selection serves parallel purposes. 
These consist of a rapid fire machine gun, homing bullets, a ricochet shot, and a slower gun that deals heavy damage. Each weapon has their own quirks that makes them good or bad for individual situations, but it can sometimes take a little while to figure out which gun makes sense for each encounter. As you defeat enemies, they'll drop a number of different sized jewels. Picking these up will power up your weapon, allowing for even more destructive mayhem. Each gun has an enhanced version that makes you feel almost unstoppable, but that feeling can be fleeting as you always have this counter up here breathing down your neck. Small ones add two seconds, medium ones add five, and large ones add a whole bunch. The timer certainly makes things a bit more frantic. You gotta keep moving forward or else you lose your power up, and that's about the last thing you want to happen when you make it to a boss. Luckily, as long as you have at least one second on the clock when the boss battle starts, the counter will pause for the duration of the battle. This is great because fighting these guys is rough enough as it is. It's even tougher with a low powered weapon. Boost icons will appear every once in a while as well, and picking it up can enhance your firepower even further. These only last a few seconds though, so don't get too excited. If you're looking to get a bit more physical with an enemy, then running into one will cause you to grab onto them so you can beat them senseless. As integral as this was in Gunstar Heroes, it's practically useless here. Its inclusion seems more like an afterthought. Both characters also have screen clearing super bombs at their disposal. These do what you think they would, but once again their styles differ. Axel's affects the entire screen but does less damage overall, while Ruka's is more centralized and can be a real asset during boss battles. Finally, each character has a grappling hook that they can use to quickly pull themselves to upper levels. Unfortunately, much like the physical attacks, this is woefully underutilized in the scheme of the entire game and is only useful in a handful of situations. Soundtrack-wise, Gunner's Heaven really excels. This is a perfect time capsule of CD-based video game soundtracks in the mid-90s. The first stage features a different tune depending on which character you're playing as, but the OST is the same for the rest of the game. There's also the odd bit of voice acting, including bosses talking some smack during short cutscenes before and after battles. For some reason, these voices default to off when you first start up the game. At the time, Gunner's Heaven was pigeonholed as a knockoff of Gunstar Heroes, even though it did a great job of being similar. It's fun to play and pretty challenging, especially in later levels. Once the Wild Arms series started, Media Vision never looked back. Perhaps with over 20 years of distance on it now, people can look at Gunner's Heaven with new eyes and appreciate it as just a really good, solid run and gun. <laughs>